will just be a simple um, uh, recap of some of the exam problems without solutions. I just want to explain what I would do to solve the problem and then you can add numbers yourselves. So in question number three, we're looking at um, we're looking at object in an accelerating unit. So a man of a mass 100 kg, I can write this down, is standing in weight scales in a lift. If the scale reads newtons, find the reading on the scales if object is at rest. So in the first case, if object is at rest, the reading on the lift will be the same as um, the gravity. Take a look at this. Um, let me just draw a straighter line. The gentleman is standing on the on the scales. Because he's not moving away from the scales and he's not moving through the scales, the force that he's acting on the scales downwards has to be equal to the force that scales are acting on him upwards. So the two forces are going balanced. The reading on the scales is always um, the value of the force that's pushing on the gentleman upwards. This is what the scale reads. So this would be the reading. Now, in this case, there is no other unbalanced force acting upon this um, object. So we can say that the reading of the scale will be equal to weight, which is this force here, and that's equal to mg. If you substitute, you'll find out the value. In the second case, we're looking at the lift accelerating upwards at 3 meters per second. Again, we can draw our situation. This is the gentleman on the scales in the lift. So this is in the lift. He obviously is acting on the scales downwards with the force equal to the force of gravity. And the scales are pushing on him with the normal reaction force. Now, that normal reaction force is uh, also... So that's the force equal to the force of gravity. And we also know that the full system is accelerating upwards. So the force has to be acting up with some acceleration. And that force is equal to mass times the acceleration. So the reading on the scale, so the reading on this scale here, so let's say that this is the scale. So the reading on the scales will be equal to the normal reaction force, equal to the force of gravity, plus the force um, that's causing the system to accelerate. So we can say that reading will be equal to m g plus m a. Sometimes you can just take um, uh, take the mass out, but there is no need to do it in here. Um, the way I look at the third case is in a very similar way. We're looking at accelerating object accelerating downwards at some acceleration. So let's take a look again. Um, this is my scales. And again, I have a gentleman standing on the scales. I know that he um, is standing on the scales, so he's acting upon the scales with force due to the force of gravity. And because he's not going through the scales, the scales have to be stopping him with the force that's opposite and equal to the force of gravity. Now, he is accelerating downwards. So the direction of the force which accelerates this system is downwards. And that's why this force will have to be negative, minus ma. It's negative because it's directed downwards, which is opposite to the direction in which the force, the, the force that's causing the reading on the scale is acting. So this is the force that the scale is reading. And the force is opposite in direction, it's pointing downwards. So that's why in the equation for reading on the scales, we can write down that that reading is equal to mg minus ma. Very simple to remember is that whenever the acceleration is pointing down, the reading on the scales will be lower. And whenever the acceleration is pointing up, the reading on the scales will be higher. Now you need to be careful when you're considering this situation because the acceleration will be pointing down in a case where lift is going up and slowing down to a stop or decelerating.
and the same way the acceleration will be pointing down when the lift is going down and accelerate. So again, acceleration is pointing downwards and pointing downwards. Two opposite cases are when the lift is going up and accelerating. In that case, the acceleration is pointing upwards and the reading on the scale is going to be higher than the weight. If the lift is going down but decelerating, but decelerating, um, you need to be, you need to recognize that the acceleration, the acceleration that's slowing down that lift is pointing upwards. It's pointed opposite to the direction of the motion. The direction of the motion is down. Actually, I might do it. This is the direction of the motion and this is the direction of the acceleration. So in this case, the direction of the motion is in this, this direction. This is um, uh, direction of acceleration is black, direction of the motion is in red. Going down and here is going up. So whenever the direction of the acceleration is down, the force on the scale is going to be lower. Whenever the direction of the acceleration is up, the force on the scale is going to be higher. Let me just get rid of those um, arrows. There is no need for them. So that's um, that's something to be cognizant of. Going up, decelerating, so acceleration is pointed downwards. So that's problem number three. Problem number four is exactly the same as problem from the homework. I'm not going to solve it, I just said how I would go about solving it. We have um, uh, support sticking out from the wall and the sign is suspended from that support. We know that the steel cable that's holding the full system up, that that angle theta is equal to 35. Uh, 35 degrees and what we're trying to find out is what is the tension in the cable so tension in the cable is this force here acting along the cable and this is my tension tension T if this if I redraw my tension T over here I note that I can break this tension T into two component forces. Um, this is my angle theta. I can break it down into two uh, component forces, one acting up at 90 degrees to the support, and this force would be equal to T sine theta. This is um, opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse T sine theta. And this force along the support is T cos theta. This is something I have to recognize. If my tension is acting at a diagonal, I can break it, uh, break that force into two component forces, both perpendicular uh, to each other. And um, one can be expressed using the sine function, the other one expressed using the cosine function. That's what I need to remember. So what I know in terms of the forces in here, another force that's acting here, is the weight, we have the weight given, and another force is the weight of this sign, and that's act on the, in our system. What, what I need to recognize is the following, that this force here, number one, and this force here, number two, that those two forces are rotating my system in the clockwise direction. Now the system is stationary, the system is in equilibrium, it's not moving anywhere, which tells me that, um, let me use this color, this force here, this particular force acting up, there is only one force that's acting up, this T sine theta component, 
that this force is acting in the counterclockwise direction is is giving the system the counterclockwise moment so take a look again we have a clockwise moment from the weight we have a clockwise moment from the weight of the sign and we have one counterclockwise moment from the perpendicular component of the cable tension now we know that moments clockwise are equal to moments counterclockwise i can write this equation as m1 plus m2 is equal to m3 let's call this moment number three if i put the equations down weight times d1 plus force times d2 is equal to t sine theta times d2 note that d1 and d2 are the same 1.2 meters and i can just find t uh, from here so t will be equal to weight times d1 plus force times d2 so just calculating some of the moments clockwise here and i can divide it by sine theta times d2 and that will turn out to be about 965 newtons in the problem the key to recognize for this problem is that because the system is in equilibrium the sum of the the sum of the moments is um, acting clockwise is equal to the sum of the moments acting counterclockwise we're not looking at the forces we're looking at the moments and then from the moments we'll be able to find the tension in the cable now the next problem which i thought went, didn't go extremely well was the problem um, with the fixed mass of gas in a syringe now what was interesting about the problem is that is the application of um, Boyle's law Boyle's law states simply that um, pressure is proportional to one over volume recognize this it's proportional pressure is not equal um, one over volume this this st statement here is not true it's proportional to one over volume what this means is that pressure multiplied by volume is equal to a constant number some of you noted that and um, were able to calculate that constant and find the volume after the change in the system but a much better way is to note that initial pressure let's call it pi times initial volume let's call it vi is equal to final pressure let's call it pf times final volume vf we can solve this equation to find our final volume over here and this is the recommendation I would um, I would have for you to always try to solve this type of equation rather than calculating the constant. But finding the constant also works. So that's how we solve that problem. And the last one is we're looking at a situation where we have um, this is the last problem where we have a small mass suspended from a string, and there is um, another mass. I'm going to draw it like this moving towards it at high speed that speed is equal to 100 meters per second now the two objects are going to collide and after that uh, they're going to stick together when this object approaches this is going to collide and it's going to push it a little bit in this direction because the object is hanging from a string it's going to move in a pendulum like motion so after our situation is going to turn into something like this we're going to have this object con consisting of mass 1 and mass 2 hanging at some height now this is my original position this is going to be brought by, brought up so this is the original position of the object that distance here is the maximum height to which this object will will move when this pendulum starts swinging it's going to swing away until it reaches its maximum maximum swing this height then 
the height between the maximum swing of that pendulum, let's say, and the original position of that pendulum. That's the height we need to find out. To find out what that height is, we need to apply two principles. The first one, PCM. We know that M1 U1 plus M2 U2 is the same as M1 plus M2 times V1. So M1 U1 mass of the first object times the speed of the first object plus M2 U2 mass of the second object times the speed of the second object. The two objects collide and they stick together so that's why we get M1 plus M2 for the final mass times final speed of the of the combined two objects. Now um, this is we're using this equation to find V1. Uh, we're using this equation to find V1, um, so that would be M1 U1 plus M2 U2 divided by M1 plus M2. Once we have uh, the speed identified, we can simply use that speed to apply our principle of conservation of mechanical energy. So this is where we're going to have a principle of conservation of mechanical energy. In the beginning, this object combined combination of the two original masses is moving with that speed V1. And so it will have some kinetic energy and the potential energy will be equal to zero. At the end of its motion, the object will have zero speed. So the kinetic energy over here, I'm going to change the color. but the object will have some potential energy. So we can write this down using the principle of conservation of mechanical energy that EP1 plus EK1 is equal to EP2 plus EK2. So initial and final. Obviously in this case we know that this is equal to zero and this is equal to zero. So we can rewrite it that the m v1 squared. I'm going to use capital M just to highlight something. m v1 squared over 2 is equal to m g h. Take a look at this. v1 is the speed we found out from our principle of conservation of momentum. m, the capital M, is combined mass of two objects. What's useful to recognize here is that that mass cancels across the two sides of our equation. So what I can write down is that height, which is the, what the question is looking for, is equal to um, v squared divided by 2 times g. And g, recognize that g is simply acceleration due to gravity. And that should then help you to find the really small value of height to which this object moves. So hopefully this is useful for you. and. Um, if you have any questions, you can always leave a comment and um, let me know. Thank you.